Hey, what's up everyone? Today, I'm gonna show you how to set up GitHub access for your coding projects under Visual Studio Code on a Chromebook. I'm gonna go through the setup, how to clone repositories, create a new repository from a project you create on your Chromebook, and how to make changes to push to GitHub and pull any new changes that you don't have. So let's begin. Before you do anything on your Chromebook, you need to have a GitHub account. If you do not have one, go to www.github.com and sign up for a free account. Once you're done doing that, come back and continue this tutorial. Okay, so now that you have a GitHub account, let's continue. I always begin my tutorials involving Linux on Chromebooks with running two commands in a terminal window. So open up a terminal window and type sudo apt-get update and sudo apt-get upgrade. These commands make sure you have the latest info for downloading and upgrading Linux packages. You also need Visual Studio Code installed on your Chromebook. If you do not have it installed, check out my video that shows you how to install it. Next, we need to make sure we have Git installed. Now, if you have an up-to-date fresh Linux install on your Chromebook, then you will have the Git version control system already installed. I don't know if older Linux installations have it, but you can check to see if it's installed by typing git dash dash version. A version number will appear if it's installed. You can see that my version is 2.20.1. If the version command did not work, you can install git by typing sudo at get install git. Another important package that needs to be installed or else you won't be able to authenticate with GitHub is the GNOME keyring package. Install it by typing sudo at get install GNOME keyring. The next step is to configure the username and email we want to use for Git. I set these to the username and email I used when I signed up for GitHub. For the username, type git config dash dash global user dot name and your git username. And for the email type git space config dash dash global user dot email space and the git email address. Now it's time to configure GitHub access in Visual Studio Code. Make sure you're logged into the GitHub website on your Chrome browser. Then open up Visual Studio Code. We have to decide whether we want to clone a repository we may already have that exists on GitHub or create a new repository on your Chromebook and upload it to GitHub. Repositories are just folders containing your projects. I'm gonna show you both ways but let's first clone a repository that already exists on your GitHub account. Make sure you have a repository all set up. It can be empty or you can fill it with empty text files. This button you see here is the source control button. Click on it. If I quickly go to my GitHub account, you can see that I have a project called test clone. I can click on it and see the files I created for it. After I clone this repository, the files will then appear on my Chromebook and I will be able to make changes to them and push those changes from my Chromebook to my GitHub repository. Now, go back to Visual Studio Code and click on the Clone Repository button. You will get an alert over here saying, Clone from GitHub. Click on it. Another alert will appear asking you to sign in to GitHub. Click Allow. A web browser window will show up asking you to authorize Visual Studio Code access to GitHub. Click Continue, and you should see a success screen with an alert asking you to open up Visual Studio Code. Click on the button saying Open Visual Studio Code URL Handler. 
Doing that will take you to Visual Studio Code with another alert. Click Open. Here, you will be asked for a password for the GNOME key ring. You can set this to whatever you want. This is not your GitHub password. The GNOME key ring is a program that Linux applications use to store security credentials such as passwords and certificates. You might have the key ring already set up and not even be asked to choose a password. But if you don't, enter a password you would like to use now. After setting up the key ring, I'm told here that no remote repositories were found. That's okay, I can manually enter the location of my repository. The format of a GitHub repository is the username of the owner forward slash the repository name. For example, one of my personal repositories is lutexsource forward slash test clone. This is a private repository I created and is not accessible to you. The point of this tutorial is to access your own personal repositories. So like I mentioned earlier, make sure you have a repository already set up on GitHub, but you can type the location of any public repository you want to pull or any private repository from a user who gave you access to it. So you see my personal repository show up on the list. I'll click on it. Now I'm asked a location to save the repository to on my Chromebook. I'll create a dev folder to save all my repositories to. Then click on select repository location. That will create a folder inside my dev folder called test clone, which is the name of the repository I cloned. Here at the bottom, I'm asked if I want to open the repository and I'll click on open to open it. I can also manually open the folder in Visual Studio Code. Upon opening the repository, I'm asked if I trust the authors of the folder storing my repository. I'll click yes because I'm logged into my Chromebook using my personal Google account and I'm the only one that uses it. Now, if you look to the left side of the Visual Studio Code window, you can see the files in the repository I just cloned from GitHub. And if I view the repository in the GitHub website, I see the same files. I'll take a look at this file and compare to the one cloned to my Chromebook and they match. Okay, now let me show you how to create a new GitHub repository on your Chromebook and then push it to GitHub. Close the current folder. Now let's open a new folder. Click File, Open Folder, I'll go into my dev folder, and I'll create a new folder from scratch. This folder is going to contain the repository I want to upload to GitHub. I'll name it New Repo, then click on OK. I'll say yes, I trusted the authors. Now I'm going to create some files for this repository. I create one called test file one and write some text on it. Then I'll create another called test file two and also write some text on it. And I'll create a third test file. After I'm done, I'll click on the source control button. With a new folder that you create, you will be shown different options. The first is initialize repository. This button requires you to at least create an empty repository on the GitHub website in order to push these files. To save the extra step of creating a new repository on the website, we can instead click on publish to GitHub. So click on it. I'm asked here if I want to publish this as a private repository or as a public repository. I'll choose private repository because I only want myself to have access to it. After that, it shows me the files that are going to be uploaded and they are all checked. If there happen to be some files or folders you don't want uploaded, just uncheck them. I want all files to be uploaded, so I'll leave them checked and then click on OK. The process of uploading the files will begin and when it's done, you'll see this pop up at the bottom right of the screen 
telling you that the repository has been successfully uploaded. If I click on open on GitHub, it will bring up a browser with my repository open. If I click on this tab I had opened before I pushed a new repository, you will see that we only have the test clone repository we cloned earlier in this video. If I refresh the page, the new repository I just pushed appears. I'll now go into the new repo repository. I'll click on test file 2 to check its contents. I'll also do the same for test file 3 and test file 1. And the contents match what I originally wrote in Visual Studio Code. Okay, so you now know how to pull current repositories from GitHub and how to push new repositories you create from your Chromebook to your GitHub account. Now let me show you how to make changes to files and push those changes to GitHub and also how to fetch new changes to files from GitHub. I'll click on the button to view my project files. I'll modify test file 1 with some changes. An M appears next to it, letting you know that there are modifications. Then I'll create a new Python file. I'll call it github.py. A letter U appears next to it. Since we just created it and haven't pushed it to GitHub yet, it gets this U marker. I'll then write out some Python code in the file that prints out a message. If I take a look at the source control button, I can now see a number on it. The number is 2. If I hover over the button, I'm told that there are two pending changes. One change is the edit I made to test file 1. The second change is the creation of the github.py file. I'll click on the source control button. Actually, before I continue, let me create one more test file. Now there are three pending changes. I'll click on the source control button again. If I click on test file one, where the code window should be, I get two code windows. The left side shows the old file. The right side shows the new file after the changes I made. Test file 4 and GitHub Pi are new files, so there's nothing to show on the left code window. Let's compare test file 1 with the files that's on the GitHub website. I'll go to the site and open it. Here you can see that it has the old file, because we haven't pushed the new changes to GitHub. Let me go back to Visual Studio Code and begin the process of pushing the new changes to GitHub. First, we have to stage the changes. Click on the plus button next to the file to do that. You can see that test file 1 was moved to a new category called staged. The next step is to commit the change and write a message explaining the changes. Click on the check mark towards the top. I'm then asked to write a commit message. I'll write a short one explaining what I did and hit enter to confirm. The change is committed, but it's not on GitHub yet. I only committed the change to my local repository in the Chromebook. To have the change on GitHub, I have to push the change there. To do that, I'll click on these three dots here to get a menu. Then click push. If you look right under where the check mark and the three dot menu are, you can see a line moving representing the progress of the push. When that line is done, it means that the push has finished. Now if I go to GitHub and refresh test file 1, we can see the new changes I made. Okay, let's say I want to push all the changes I made at once. In Visual Studio Code, if I click on the check mark before staging any changes, I get this message saying that there are no staged commits do I want to stage and commit directly? I'll click yes. And write a message for this commit and hit enter. Before I push commit, I'll show you what the repository looks like on GitHub. There's no test file for or github.py. So I'll go back to Visual Studio Code, click on the three dot menu, then click on push. 
Now, if I go to the GitHub site and refresh the page, test file four and github.py now appear. I'll take a look at the contents for test file four. And it's what I expect. And I'll take a look at GitHub Pi. It's also correct. The final thing I'm going to show you is pulling any new files added or current files updated on your GitHub repository. For example, I made a change to test file four on another computer and pushed that change to GitHub. I also added a new file on that other computer called test.pile. These files do not exist in my Chromebook, but I want those changes to appear on my Chromebook. If I go to my GitHub page, you can see the new test file. And if I look at test file four, you can see the new line I added. I'll go back to Visual Studio Code now. To retrieve these changes from GitHub, what you need to do is go to the source control section. I have test file four open so you can see it updated in real time. Now click on the three dot menu, then click pull. Test file four should soon update. And it did. Now, if I go to the file explorer, I will also see the new test.py file. So that's how you set up GitHub access on Visual Studio Code with your Chromebook and some of the basics of using it. Anyway, I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please give it a like. And if you want to see more content like this, hit the subscribe button and it's a bell icon so you can get notified of future videos. Thanks for watching and I'll speak to you next time.